Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is Tuesday. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for joining us on the show tonight. And we've got three in the studio. We've got Alan Ruff, we've got Darren Jackson, and a man who pleaded with us to get on the show for nothing. So we eventually asked Tommy Johnson to come here and join us. So Tommy's going to give us his words of wisdom on today's topics. I feel as if we're running a show called Friends Reunited, Ruffy. We're just getting old pals back together and Jacko and Tomo. Yeah, it's definitely go back a few years and a lot of good stories to tell. Yeah, and of course, uh, you know, sometimes it's not about the knowledge you have in football. It's just getting each other jobs along the way, eh, Tommy? Is that, <laughs> is that what it's all about? Because you've got your head of recruitment job at Blackpool and, and you've got Bonzo there helping you out. My senior scout in Scotland. Is that what you mean, Peter? <laughs> Of course, your your job's caused a fair bit of consternation. Are you are you happy that you're there? <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> we made his it took three hours to get that out. Oh, of I had yeah. to get it out. By the way, I mean it's a it's you were going one place, which is South End. You end up at Blackpool. Um, what swayed you? Good question. No, I just felt for myself it was uh, it was a better fit. You know, obviously it spoke to Henrik and Johan about it. And then uh, it was lastminute.com that Blackpool had came in and uh, talked to them and I thought about it and thought it was uh, the best fit for me. Yeah, I think some people actually, you know, along the way look and you get decisions in life are sliding doors moments that can suddenly transform your life or change your life. Blackpool at times I thought it was a car crash of a club um, and finances dictate that. Mm. Suddenly do you feel there's a, a, a better and bigger vision there? Definitely because there's a new owner come in, you know, he's a fan, you know, he lives in Hong Kong in the hedge funds and all that and has bought the club and I think everybody knows what happened in the past with the Oystons and how it was, the town, you could see they were really down and I think there's a lift in the place at the minute, Peter, new chief exec who Darren worked with before and Ben Mansford and uh, I think we're, we're going to have a go, you know, you got Simon Grayson in the manager house who's done its stuff at League One and Championship level. So it was, it just felt right. As I said, it was very, very much last minute when I, when I was going there. And uh, yeah, it was a traumatic couple of weeks, shall I say? And he's laughing <laughs> his head he's, off, isn't he? He's, he's <laughs> laughing his head off there because he loves it because you're portrayed as the bad guy in this whole thing. I was, yes. Yeah. Mm. Are you speaking to him yet? Who? Henrik. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. Yeah? Yeah, we'll always be okay. But... As we say, that's football, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I think it's been mentioned that, you know, it was down to me that Henrik never got the job, but that's not the case, to be honest. Yeah, I, I mean, it's tough when you have to make that call, though, Darren. I mean, you've got to, <laughs> you've got to make a call that's based on, you know, something that suits you more than anything else, as Tommy has mentioned there. I think so, and I know what he's like. I, um, he does care about other people, and but this time he's had to make the, the right decision. It's... it's Obviously, his decision, and we'll, we'll see if it's right. But I think I've been in there. I know Ben, and uh, the new owners are coming in, and they want to expand. They want to from the youths right right through. They want to um, upgrade the stadium, upgrade the training ground, um, get a new youth system um, in place. And so I can see I can see the plans, and I can see why t uh, Tommy. And went for it. Yeah, last point on this. How painful is it for you? Because I know Henrik was is a pal, he's our teammates and Johan and everything like that. Was it painful the way the whole thing panned out? Cause Definitely, you... yeah. It was the hardest phone call I'd ever make. Uh, as I said, it was so much last minute. And then, you know, after having decided to go to South End, I did have other offers. And one wasn't Celtic, as it's been, you know, it was it was broadcast in the, in the media and the papers and all that. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely because it would, you know, Henrik and Johanna moving over from Sweden, whether Magdalena, Henrik's wife, and Jennifer, Johanna's wife, were going to come over, I'm not so sure, but uh, it's a massive decision. But 
these things happen in football. I've had it in football before where, you know, I was going to one club and then I wasn't and going somewhere else. So uh, very difficult, you know, making that call and saying, no, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, I've decided to go somewhere else was very difficult. But uh, as I said, that's football and, and I'm, yeah, I'm more than sure I've made the right decision. Uh, let's hope uh, time is a great healer and you can uh, obviously uh, bury the hatchet. Ruffy, I, I hope you feel with the Darren. same Yeah, I, hope, I was just going to say, Ruffy, I hope you feel the same way when you eventually move on and it just, it just becomes Peter's football show. It will happen because you, you'll go as well, Ruffy. You Peter, know that, don't Peter you? Peter and Fergie's or Peter and Jabbers. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Yeah. Fergie's already made the move. He's yeah. definitely waiting. Yeah, Ruffy. No, I think the only way I'll be leaving here will be, you know, at the end, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, every time he has a birthday, he just gets more and more morbid about the whole thing. Anyway, lots to talk about on the show. Tommy's obviously candid and honest uh, about that situation. And football, you know, it can throw up so many moments that can determine the fate of an individual or indeed the fate of a club. And that's roughly what's basically happening at the moment. Celtic are getting ready to face Hamilton Ackies tomorrow. It doesn't look as if Edouard's going to be in the lineup. And then people are thinking, will he throw him straight in? Is he saving him for the for the cup final? Well, only them. They'll know that. They'll know the extent of what he's carrying. You know, we don't. You know, we're not there. They'll know whether they can take a chance and we're not. I don't think they will. I think the weekend's too important. I think the positive thing for Celtic is I think they can afford to maybe rest maybe four or five. I don't think Rangers are in that position that they can go up to Aberdeen and rest four or five and try and get something out of the game. So it's a harder game for, for Rangers to deal with before a cup final than it is for Celtic. Yeah, with that in mind, it's probably Lewis Morgan who might get the shout again against Ackies again. He hasn't done anything wrong. If anything, is he looking more and more promising for you? I was, I was very surprised when he did play through the middle in the European game and then he played and I think he did very, very well. I think Lewis's biggest problem is that Mikey Johnson's come back at the exact same time. I worked with Michael at under-19 level. Michael Special. I mean, incredible young talent. And I think once he is up to speed, I think he will, he will play. I'm not saying he'll play. He might play tomorrow night. I'm not saying he'll play in the final. But over the piece, I think he'll get himself in the team and he'll be a regular. So I think that's... Morgan's done a great job. But you've got Griffiths there. Is he, is he saving Griffiths for the final just in case Edward's not fit? But I think if Edward's 75% fit, I think he'll play. Yeah, um, it's always worrying now because Darren's head of recruitment at Blackpool as well, Ruffy. If Mikey Johnson's going to get the uh, big move to Blackpool now that he said <laughs> he's, he got me job already. <laughs> oh, not head of recruitment. Head of recruitment in Scotland. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, That's two jobs. I, I, I know. I just about to say, I'm, I'm saving the Henrik headline. It doesn't. Mean, I'm, not, I'm not giving him the job. But anyway, apart from that, um, Neil Lennon himself said that all the focus is on Hamilton Ackies. Um, so tomorrow provides another stiff challenge. You know, Hamilton miraculously every year find a way to maintain the Premiership standards, and um, <clears throat> got a cute manager there in Brian. He's quite smart, quite experienced. Uh, but we're not taking the game for granted at all. Yeah, so it's uh, Celtic against Hamilton Ackies, but the game of the night is undoubtedly up at Petaudry because it's this tit for tat now, Tommy. You had it with Darren um, when you were chasing uh, league titles in the colours of Celtic. Uh, now Rangers are back, they're strong, they're challenging, and, and Petaudry, at the best of times, is, is never an easy place to go. But they've got a special player in Alfredo Morelos. He's done unbelievable, Annie, this season. I think after all these discipline problems we've seen over the last few years, uh, I've been to a few games when you just look at him and you go, what are you doing? There's something not right upstairs, you know, and he's lashing out and getting sent off. But whatever Stevie Gerrard and his staff have done to him is unbelievable. And he's turned it around and he is a handful, definitely. And uh, maybe going up there, you know, it, it, it's not an ideal game for them before the cup final on Sunday, but... You've got to play them sometime, and that's what the fixtures have brought up. But uh, he's scoring goals, and he looks like he's calmed down. And the difference, again, never mind Morelos, is the fact that this is a Rangers side that last season would have maybe slipped up draws here or there, the odd defeat along the way, Darren. Now, that isn't the case, which is why they're only behind on one goal at the top of the table. Without doubt, the, the squad's <coughs> obviously stronger. He might mix it up. I don't think he'll mix it up too much. Um, I think Morales will play. And you're looking, he's, he's been sent up off there, what, twice? 
three times up there. But his discipline is without doubt. There's, he's still got that edge. There's no that you can see him on the pitch. I was at Ibrox on um, Sunday. You can still see he's got that edge, and I don't think you can lose that edge because that puts, that's what drives him on. And um, he's def definitely in some form just now. But they've definitely got a stronger squad that can compete at all levels now. They're not l losing games or drawing games that they did last year. And, um, and that's why it's tight at the top. Yeah, and the manager, Stephen Gerrard, says <coughs> the team are well geared up for going up north. Uh, I think we just fully focused on Aberdeen uh, and the challenge that they pose. It'll be a tough game up at Pataudry. Um Certainly going up there in my time, we've had some real good, good challenges and battles up there, so I expect the same. Um, it's... 100% focus on this game and um, we'll, we'll worry about Sunday you know, come Thursday. Yeah, I mean, this is crucial uh, in many ways, uh, Ruffy, because never mind the cup final on the Sunday, which everybody's talking about, the first domestic piece of silverware, um, to go up to Pataudry and win would be a huge shot in the arm going into the game anyway and getting, uh, you know, the chance to end this dominance of the treble, treble and Celtic uh, chasing the quadruple treble. Yeah, that's that's a positive side you've got to take out. Yeah, if, if Rangers were to go up to Aberdeen and win convincingly as they did the last time, going into a cup final, that's always a good thing. But all I'm thinking about is the 90 minutes as a manager, you'll be sitting hoping certain individuals don't pick up any injuries because it's going to be a right meaty game. You know, there's going to be tackles flying in everywhere. And you don't want your best players uh, being in doubt for the weekend. OK, um, from uh, Aberdeen Rangers and Celtic against Hamilton, we're going to talk uh, about Hearts. But that's all coming up after another man we'll be talking about a little later on in the show. And that is, of course, Lionel Messi. We've got his shirt. It's signed and you can win it. If you'd like to win this unique Lionel Messi signed Barcelona top, subscribe to our YouTube channel PLZ Soccer and we'll announce the winner on Friday 20th of December. Good luck! It's not a bad prize. We'll uh, discuss with the guys if he is the greatest of all time. Uh, there are a few differing opinions on this one, but hopefully we'll slap everybody back into line and get a one, two, three. Who is your goat? Uh, get ready for that. Post it on our social media as well. And if you want to win the shirt, all you have to do, as it says there, is subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and you will be in the draw. Uh, so, hearts. Uh, this is a situation which has been so much delay uh, and Hearts are definitely at the moment in a worrying area at the bottom of the table. Daniel Stendel on the verge of becoming the new manager. In case you don't know too much about him, here's a little insight. The Hearts fans might have done the research. They seem happy with uh, the poll that we conducted there uh, on the Twitter account, Ruffy. But I just wonder if it's a huge gamble, given that they're going to have to battle. Um, we talked about Tommy and how great an insight he had into uh, potentially the South End job. But this guy's going to need some people around him to know all about the Scottish game. Yeah, well, it doesn't look as if it's going to be that way. It looks as if he's going to bring his own guys up, uh, which he's every right to do if he feels that's the trusted people he needs round about him. Uh, it looks as if it's a compensation thing. Obviously, he wants to bring his guys up and hearts have to fall into that situation. You know, obviously, the director of football is still to be announced as well. So maybe that's the turn and fro that's, that's, that's going on behind the scenes. But they certainly need somebody in as quick as possible to, to organise that side. Yeah, I mean, he's got a good reputation for the style of football and that he likes his teams to play, at Tommy. But I just wonder about coming to uh, a team with great expectation, but they're in a relegation battle at the moment. The, the wins are few and far between. 
Yeah, the, uh, he's done really well in England. He said got the promotion from League One, which is no mean feat to do, you know what I mean? Very difficult. Uh, Hearts have took the time. They must feel that he is the right man, you know. They've, they've probably done the due diligence and all that and had several interviews with him and probably other, other potential candidates as well and they must feel he's the right man. No one knows what goes on behind the scene. Everyone can surmise, is he going to be OK? You've just seen he's going to bring his own staff in, shall we say, who probably don't know too much about the Scottish League, but I'm sure they'll do the homework. And, you know, if he's if he's the right man for the job, time will tell. Yeah, well, they botched it the last time because there were so many <laughs> candidates being mentioned for the job and then suddenly Craig Devine decided to pick himself, Darren, which is, <laughs> which is not a bad way to do it, <laughs> is it? Good you're in charge. <laughs> Um, but no, I think they're actually right. I've been, I've actually been at the last two games, and they, they just look a team that distraught in confidence. It's, it's just gone just now. Um, but I think the board and Ann Budge are right to take their time. I know they're at the bottom of the league, and the fans want a manager in, and it is time now to try and get the manager in. But the guy looks as though he's, he's got a good record. Um, but I think he will need someone. There is people in there that possibly will stay, but, but he will need people up here who who do have a little insight into the into the Scottish mm -hmm. game, into the Scottish teams he's playing against. Yeah, Hearts against Livingston. Uh, it's one of those games, Ruffy, where I think the ball might need a flight path. Um, <laughs> it's it's not one for the purists at the moment. It may well become a, a little better for Hearts fans to view if if Daniel Stendel's football's anything to go by. No, I think this is one of the games. Although they're not playing particularly well, they would expect to pick up three points in this one. They've still got quality players in that Hearts side, but they need everything to go well for them. They don't want to fall behind to Livingston. Yeah, OK. Um, of course, there are other games in there. Um, Muddles Keith uh, Lasley says they still have the hunger and desire in the squad, which helps them overcome uh, the fact that they don't have a huge budget. They don't have the ability to go out and buy players that are completely uh, can completely transform. They, they have to delve into some of the markets in uh, League One in England, uh, League Two sometimes, never mind nowhere near the Championship, uh, and hope that they come up good for them. Yeah, but it's the young boys that are impressing me. Uh, it's every one that he throws in there, and they're no household names. They're, they're given a chance to see what they can do, and none of them has let them down. Every time they come in, somebody has added a wee spark to that motherwell side. Yeah. Uh, at the bottom end, Darren, I've never known it's so tough. Kilmarnock against St Johnson. Tommy Wright just has to hope somehow that this side can actually show any kind of form. Yeah, again, they were talking about confidence. I was, I was at Kilmarnock Saturday, um, Motherwell Saturday. And their confidence just looks absolutely shattered. Um, each player just—they're young at the back, no no experience. Where Tommy, Tommy had the, the Fraser, Anderson, Dave Mackay, Murray Davidson, um, Stephen McLean up front. He had a great core of experienced players who did a wonderful job for them. And he's—they're he's, lacking a little bit of that just just now, but. Um, Great performance against Aberdeen. You're down to nine, nine men, so you're just looking to turn up again. And um, you never know in this league. Uh, results surprise you sometimes, and players surprise you. Go out, and they just need to roll their sleeves up just now and just work hard and try and get that confidence back. Yeah, Ross County against Hibs is the other match. Just to finish, may as well uh, pay tribute to the man who uh, many are describing as the greatest of all time. He won his sixth Ballon d'Or. I'm talking, of course, about Lionel Messi. The Ballon d'Or France Football 2019 is Mr. Lionel Messi. I was close, but you know it was just someone a little bit better. And uh, I'm very proud of what I've achieved last year with Liverpool, with Holland, and hopefully we can, uh, yeah, we can do that again this year. But you know it's going to be tough. Virgil van Dijk beaten to the number one spot by Lionel Messi. Uh, absolutely incredible. What a mantelpiece he must have for those Ballon d'Or awards, Ruffy. Is he the greatest of all time in your mind, yes or no? No, I'm still in the pelican. Oh, wow. But that's just because of my age, but I'm sure the younger guys <coughs> in here might be swayed differently. Yeah, does. 
I'm a Maradona man. I mean, he was just, and the biggest thing that Messi's not doesn't look as though he's going to have is a World Cup. Yeah, is that um, the the crowning moment for you? Well, I think. Listen, you need your teammates. You always need your teammates. But that World Cup, he almost won it himself, and he he was just incredible that yeah. World Cup. So um, I, I I go for Maradona, but. We guys no far behind. Yeah, uh, and of course Maradona was in an era where you could get booted from pillar to post, <laughs> Tommy Johnson. So I cannot wait to hear who's your choice. Messi. Yeah, greatest yeah. of all time. Yeah, for me, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of great players mentioned too there: Pele and Maradona, George Best, Ronaldo, all up there. But I oh, just love the little fella. As soon as he gets that ball, he just excites you. It's just because you're a lefty as well. Correct. Yes. <laughs> there you are. I knew I'd get that out of him. <laughs> anyway, listen, it's been a joy um, to see Tommy uh, getting him on the show. You want to have seen his face when we opened up with the first five questions that went as red as his hair used to be, <laughs> but not anymore. Uh, thank you very much to Tommy for coming up here onto the show, and we'll get him on again if indeed uh, Darren invites him up for a weekend party. Or, Ruffy, dare I say it, because he's been on, does he get to the Christmas party? Yes or no? Oh, I'm sure if he's here, but very welcome. He can yeah. keep his eye on Darren. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's keeping his eye on Darren. He'll be home by half ten. Uh, OK, don't forget, you can join us across all our social media. Uh, Twitter, give us your thoughts, of course, on Facebook Live, five days a week, Monday to Friday. And if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you could be in with a chance of winning that Lionel Messi signed shirt as well. Download the app. All the world football news is there for you at your fingertips, including our unique video content. But from Ruffy, from Darren Jackson and from Tommy Johnson and myself, Peter Martin, thank you very much for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.